Two education bills estimated to cost up to $800 million have passed in the Oklahoma House and now move on to the Senate for consideration. Now, one would provide tax credits for homeschooling and private school tuition, and the other would provide additional funding for public schools. Capital correspondent Jason Doyle joins us now with the details. Jason. Rich, House Speaker Charles McCall introduced his education package just last week. While the two bills gained the supermajority's vote, House Democrats raised issues about accountability and fairness. All the while, several other education-related bills and situations are moving through the legislative process. House Bill 1935 by Speaker McCall of the House and Daniels of the Senate, an act relating to students. It was Wednesday afternoon when House Bill 1935 and House Bill 2775 hit the House floor, sparking hours of questions and debate over House Speaker Charles McCall's education bills. House Bill 1935, dubbed the Oklahoma Parental Choice Tax Credit Act, offers a $5,000 tax credit for parents who send their children to private schools and a $2,500 credit for those who homeschool. House Bill 2775 adds $500 million to the education budget for $2,500 across-the-board teacher pay raises, $300 million for school district needs, and $50 million for the Red Bud School Facilities Grant Program. Despite the Democrats calling the tax credit measure a repackaged voucher system, House Floor Leader John Eccles defended the bill. Three people so far have called this a voucher bill. I understand we live in a society where we're just going to redefine words, but that's not where I am, and that's not where my constituents are. When you can't argue against the bill on the merits, you make stuff up. Representative Andy Fugate argued the tax credits are more expensive than another tax relief measure already in place. And you will discover that the cost of this actually costs more than the quarter point personal income tax every single taxpayer in the state of Oklahoma received this past year. House Bill 1935 passed by a margin of 75 to 25. House Bill 2775 also passed by a supermajority margin of 78 to 20. Don't be swayed by the naysayers. We are inclusive of all educational participants with these bills, and it's a win. I would Despite the win for House Republicans, trouble is brewing between the chairman of the House Education Appropriations Subcommittee, Representative Mark McBride, and State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Ryan Walters. We have got to focus on public education and not his crazy destruction of public education. That's how McBride is defending his move to block Walter's two proposed rules from going into place. I didn't really want to say those words. I think I've given the superintendent multiple opportunities to kind of back off from his rhetoric, but uh, he has not and continues to push the envelope. So McBride is moving House Bill 2569 to require legislative authority for those rules to be enacted. One of the proposed rules deals with content within public school libraries. It requires a yearly review and list to be sent to the State Department of Education. It restricts pornographic or sexually explicit materials and requires a district to have written policy for reviewing library content. The other proposed rule deals with parental rights, especially when it comes to a parent knowing about their child's health, mental health, development, and identity. It also requires advance notice if a student could receive sexual education materials and gives the parents the right to review those materials. Walters has added a punishment for districts which are non-compliant to his proposed rules. A violation could lead to the loss of accreditation for a school district. If we can block it, we're going to block it. There needs to be roadblocks set to continue for him to continue on the way he is now. But he has the opportunity to come back and walk some of this back and, and get some of us a little bit more on board. I don't dislike the man. I just don't dislike, I dislike his ways. By virtue of his position as state superintendent, Ryan Walters is a member of the OETA board. We reached out to his staff for an interview but received no response. However, Walters did issue a statement when he proposed the two new rules last week, saying, Bringing to the forefront the Parents' Bill of Rights removes any doubt that parents have broad and inalienable rights concerning their children and that these rights are reserved to parents without obstruction or interference from teachers or administrators. Questions of sex, morality, or religion will only be decided by Oklahoma parents, not the government. McBride says he's not against making sure inappropriate materials are kept out of public school libraries or making sure parents have a say in their child's education. He is against schools losing accreditation when those issues can be handled in a different manner. 
The, the last two instances, were, there was no substance to it. It's fear monger. I think, uh, and, and teachers, librarians, superintendents, principals are fear what he might do. McBride's bill is now heading to the full house. Then during Thursday's State Board of Education meeting, Walters made a statement which poured gasoline on the flames. Uh, I have great concerns about our state universities. Of are they doing the role that's properly necessary for our young people? Are they setting up our young people to be successful in the workforce? Or are they worried about ideology? It gives me great concern and makes me question whether we should continue be, to be recommending young people go into these universities. That brought out an immediate rebuke from McBride and Baker, saying Walters has no true authority over public universities and colleges and should focus on improving student achievement. Parental rights also a topic while the House Education Committee took up Representative Terry O'Donnell's House Bill 2546, dealing with sex education in the classroom. Classroom instruction by school personnel or third parties on sexual orientation or gender identity shall not occur in kindergarten through fifth grade or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students. The Katusa Republican noted that his bill would keep sex ed out of elementary school. Uh, kindergarten through five, it's that, mm -hmm. that, that discussion is off the table. Mm -hmm. From six forward, it needs to be a, age appropriate. Mm -hmm. And I think there are certainly things that you would, might say to a 12 year old that might not be, uh, or conversely, you might say things to a 17 year old that may not be appropriate for a 12 year old. House Bill 2546 won the committee's nay. approval. With a vote of 10 I 2 nay, I declare your bill to have passed. Back on those rules proposed by Superintendent Walters, the State Department of Education is taking public comments on the agency's website through March 17. The Board of Education could take up adopting them after that deadline.